Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship here at the First Congregational Church. It is a joy and a delight to have you with us. We invite you to find uh, that place of peace and stillness as Nathan plays us into our time of worship together.
Good morning once again, and welcome to our worship at First Congregational Church. It's a joy and a light to have you with us. And wherever you are, however you are joining us today, whether it is uh, via Facebook Live or on Madison Cable Access later this morning, uh, you are welcome here. We're delighted that you've taken some time to be with us, and your presence enriches our worship. Um, Just a couple of very brief announcements this morning. First of all, the chancel flowers um, were given to us in, in memory and, and in thanksgiving for the life of David Clark, who passed away a week or so ago, and David's service was yesterday, and our prayers and condolences go out to him, uh, to his family and his friends, of course, and also to the family and friends of Quint Noyes, um, whose service was here yesterday as well. Uh, a couple other things that are going on. Uh, this evening at 5 o'clock, via the miracle of Zoom, uh, the confirmation class will be meeting. And then next week... Uh, we will be having our first worship on the lawn. That will be an outdoor service on the, uh, the church lawn just in front of the doors to the chapel. Uh, we are looking forward to having everyone back together. Uh, we do encourage you uh, to stay safely distant from one another, from other family groups, and uh, we will uh, require you to wear a mask. That seems to be one of the things that is deeply important in containing the spread of the coronavirus and and infections due to COVID-19. So we do look forward to seeing you all. You're welcome to bring a a blanket or beach chairs. Uh, You can bring breakfast or lunch if you'd like. Uh, Sit and enjoy us, uh, enjoy this time together on the lawn as we worship together outside. And um, if you are more comfortable pulling up in your car and remaining in your car, we, uh, we welcome that and encourage you to do that as well. So we look forward to seeing you all again next week. Uh, also, following our service next week, there will be a youth group meeting in the Cairo Garden. That is the, the space between the meeting house and the church house. Uh, that'll be immediately following worship, we'll say 11.30 or so. Um, and we look forward to seeing all the kids there with Justin. And um, finally, just a quick note, uh, Sarah and I uh, will be taking some vacation time later this month and into July. That'll be the 22nd of July uh, through the end of the second week in August. Uh, Justin Ziegler and Christine Seema will be leading worship on the four Sundays that we are not here, and Justin will be handling any pastoral concerns, and we'll have contact information for you for that as well. Uh, I believe that that is all the announcements. All right, dear friends, thank you again for being with us in this time, and we look forward to, again, seeing you all next week in person. Now, as we come into our time of worship, we ask you to find that place of stillness as we raise our voices in our opening hymn, God is Here.
Now, as we enter this time of worship, we invite God's Spirit to be present as we pray together. We come once again, O God, into your presence, seeking to be in company with you and with one another through this new season in which our desire for company and communion contend with the realities of distance, in which our desire for company and communion must find new ways of imagining how we have our life together. So God, for the week past, with its blessings and burdens, we give you thanks, and for the week to come, we invite your spirit to grant us hope for health, for well-being, for strength and resolve, for those new expressions of life and community that will come from you, and for the old ties of friendship that continue to sustain and renew us. O gracious one, in this time and in all times, we call upon your name, your spirit, your grace to invest us with that faith and resolve, to know with assurance that you raise all things to new life. Amen. This morning in worship, we'll be reflecting on seeds thinking about where they are scattered and how they grow. Today, we pass the peace. We share the seeds of love, grace, and kindness. We do these things in our world. We don't know how or where they will blossom, but we do so in faith. Let us all pass the peace. Peace be with you. Good morning, and peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Peace, Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Now I invite Peter Larkin into our virtual worship space to share our scripture passage this morning from the Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew 13, verses 1 through 9. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, the sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Thank you, Peter. <clears throat> so we have now passed the 100 day mark in this new normal. My daughter Holly was just reminding me that when the schools first closed and they said it would be just for two weeks, remember that, she said. And here we are on day 113. 
If we were all here together in person like we used to be pre-COVID, I would ask you now to raise your hands and show how many of you find yourselves feeling overwhelmed and exhausted by these circumstances, at least once in a while. I know for me, I find the mental energy it takes to think through everything we do in a new way, to figure out what's safe and what's possible, what's according to guidelines, I find that to be exhausting. Not even to mention the constantly changing news, the uncertainty, the loss. I'm guessing that if we were all here in person together, the sanctuary would be filled with hands raised in the air saying, yes, I feel exhausted too. It would be nice to be able to look around and see that we are not alone. The separation, the social distance, the anxiety in the air we breathe has a way of making us feel dried up and ungrounded and vulnerable. Those are perhaps the deeper feelings, the more surface feelings might be irritable and frustrated and cranky or perhaps apathetic, not caring about things anymore, just not having the energy to give to them. So into this exhaustion and this sense of overwhelm that we are living in, Jesus says, a sower went out to sow. And he tells a parable about seeds being thrown everywhere, on paths, on rocks, among thorns, and on good soil. And of course, the seeds don't have a chance anywhere but in the good soil where they can take root and get nourishment. Everywhere else, they are dried up, ungrounded, and vulnerable. If they were people, they might be feeling cranky or irritable or just not caring anymore. But when the seeds land on good soil, miracles happen. The seeds live. They grow, they, they grow deep roots that soak in minerals and they become stalks and leaves that reach for the energy of the sun. They breathe in carbon dioxide and exhale oxygen. They bear fruit, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. It is nothing short of a beautiful and miraculous thing that a seed in good soil becomes alive and gives life. And that is where Jesus leaves the parable. He says, let anyone with ears listen. He was somewhat enigmatic, but it's clear to me where the movement in this parable goes it moves towards this combination of seed and good soil, towards the hope and the promise of the miracle of life, to the right things coming together to make the miracle flourish. This week, I was part of a webinar led by John Philip Newell, who is an author and teacher of Christian spirituality. You may have heard of him from his connection with the Iona Abbey in Scotland and his writings on Celtic spirituality. And the talk he, give was he gave was entitled, In Pandemic Time, How Shall We Live? He told a story from his childhood. He said that his father worked in international disaster relief. And so he would be away from their home for long periods of time. And it was his practice when he was away at night to take out a cassette recorder and record himself talking to his family, speaking to his wife and his children. He would tell them about his day and who he met and what he did. And then he would send the tape home so that they could hear his voice and feel connected. 
On one trip, his father was working outside of Cambodia in the wake of the killing fields. And he was at a camp for refugees who were fleeing the violence. His first day there, he met children whose parents had been killed and parents whose children had been killed. And at the end of the day, he was dropped at the room where he was staying and he walked inside and he took out his cassette recorder to speak to his family. And then he wept. For a few minutes, he wept deep and hard as the recording, as the tape recorder recorded him. And when his family received the tape, they heard his weeping. Looking back at that, Newell said what was remarkable was that his father let the recording go. He could have easily hit pause, erased it, gone back and recorded over it. But he did not hide his tears or stuff them down or clean them up in any way. He wept and he let the tears be. And Newell said he believes his father needed to weep in order to do the work that was his to do. He needed to cry to face another day. There is an expression that comes to us from first century monastics. Their wisdom says, pray until the tears come. When tears flow, something very deep within us stirs. Carl Jung said that when we cry, something in the sea of life's origins is moving again. Our tears, if we let them, can connect us with those depths, with the sea of life's origins flowing within us. Tears can water the good soil of ourselves and cultivate the ground within us. In the 12th century, there was a brilliant woman named Hildegard von Bingen, who, parenthetically, our dog Hildi is named after. Despite our aspirations, Hildi and Hildegard bear very little in common. Hildegard von Bingen was an impressive person. She experienced visions of God in her very early childhood. By the age of 14, she had become a Benedictine nun and was later chosen to lead her monastery. And in addition to running the monastery, she composed music, poems, and liturgical plays, as well as theological texts, medical books, and scientific essays. She founded two monasteries and traveled extensively on numerous speaking tours. All of this as a woman in the highly patriarchal Middle Ages. One of Hildegard's core teachings was that in order for our lives to take flight, for us to soar as God intended, we need to fly with what she called two wings of awareness. The first awareness is of the pain and suffering in the world. The second is of the beauty and glory in the world. She said we must give our attention equally to both. So for us nowadays, this might mean that if I spend an hour watching the news, listening to the death toll rise, hearing the cries of protesters, then I must also spend an hour doing something where I am wondering at the fathomless beauty of the world. Taking a walk or sitting in prayer, watching the light playing off the ocean, or a bumblebee move flower to flower, or marveling at a writer's perfect turn of phrase. As John Philip Newell puts it in a prayer that invites a sense of wonder he suggests spending time 
feeling the beat of the sacred within us, within one another, and within the body of the earth. Author and teacher Barbara Holmes writes, up above our heads, there are worlds unknown and a canopy of grace, light, air, and water that supports our survival. Without realizing it, we expend massive amounts of energy to block out the vastness of our universe. This is to be expected, for in its totality, this information can be more than human systems can take. However, by riveting our attention on the mundane, we filter out the wonder that is available with each breath. If I spend a half hour tending to the pain and suffering of the world, I must spend a half hour tending to the wonder that is available in each breath. We need both these wings of awareness to fly. I hear this as such an important message for us these days, when we are so often overwhelmed and exhausted, feeling dried up, ungrounded, vulnerable like those seeds on the rocks. We can be like the seeds without the soil or the soil without the seeds, trying to fly with one wing, longing for that combination that gives life to us, for the right elements to come together to let the miracle of life flourish in us. In our message this morning, I hear the call to engage both the pain and suffering of this time and the beauty and glory of life. To allow ourselves to weep, to feel, to grieve, and in equal measure to wonder, to worship, to praise. One without the other leads us nowhere, but the combination brings the right elements together to allow life to flourish. Together, they can connect us with the depths of being, where the miracle of life germinates and grows, and eventually bears fruit and gives life to the world. Friends, may it be so for us and for our weary world. Amen. It is one of the challenges as well as an opportunity of this sort of unusual time that we've reformulated our time of offering rather than deacons walking the aisles and um, holding out plates for your offerings. Um, we've invited people to sort of bring something to this service, some offering that they have, some gift that they have to express. And we are um, just overjoyed by Christine Sima's creativity um, this, this morning we'll hear her reworking of the famous Judy Garland song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, uh, in lyrics that speak a little bit to this time. But I also wonder, as, as perhaps we listen to Christine uh, this morning, it might be worthwhile to think about those blessings that have surprised us over the past three months. Right? One of the seeds, I think, that, that Jesus is talking about is that capacity to be grateful even even when there seems to be little to be thankful for. The glory of God is always that there is promise in everything. There is new opportunities for expressions of new life in everything in the world around us. So as, as Christine sings, as we listen to this, um, if you feel so moved, uh, perhaps type in something on the Facebook feed. Uh, that you have found surprising and for which you are deeply grateful for over the past, over the past few weeks and months. 
Again, this morning, our offering of grace and gratitude comes from Christine Seema, who has re- reworked Somewhere Over the Rainbow into a beautiful song of hope for this time. Our thanks this morning to Christine for sharing her song with us and to all of you for all your ongoing support of our life at First Congregational Church. Somewhere over the rainbow COVID's through And the world that is come has changed, now it waits anew. Somewhere over the rainbow you stay true to the things that you saw and things that you said you do so do you wish to let this go this moment when you change you grow and so less binds you cause if you let this moment pass nothing changes as long as your fear contains you Somewhere over the rainbow you must know God still speaks, turn, embrace it, God's reaching for your soul. Thank you, Christine. That was, um, that was unspeakably beautiful. Thank you so much. So we come now into that still silent center of our worship, into this time and space we set apart each week to be present to God, who is present to us and with one another no matter where we are scattered and distant. We give over this time to reflect on the people and communities in our lives and throughout the world that call upon our prayers this morning. As we come into this time of prayer, we invite you to find a place of stillness and silence. Nathan will play a few short chords. If there are prayers that you would like to add to the ones that we already have in our praise and prayer list, please feel free to type them in now. Thank you. Out of the silent refuge of our hearts, O God, we come before you now to give voice to those prayers that occupy our hearts and our lives this morning. We ask that your mercy, your compassion, your capacity to bring healing in surprising ways rest upon all those that we name aloud, all those we hold in the silent sanctuary of our hearts. We pray that your healing mercy will find rest upon Pat and Mary, Catherine and Willie, Jim and David, upon Sharon and Keith, Bob and Diane, Stephanie, Ethan, Carol and David. May your grace find its way into the lives of Jody and Aileen, Patty and Jan, Donna and David, Seymour and Linnea, Deborah and Lynn, Robert, Mickey, John, Patty, and Carol. We pray as well those gratitude, the gratitude rather, for the courage to embrace new challenges and new opportunities. 
We pray for all of those great gifts that enrich our life together as a church, that enrich our world as well. We pray with Aaron for her sister, her mom, and her brothers. We pray for all those foster children for healing from the trauma they have endured at the hands of those called to care for them. We pray for Megan and Judy, Tyler and Brett. We pray with grateful hearts for all those who have sustained us these past hundred plus days and for all those who are sick and suffering. Oh, gracious God, we pray for those who mourn, mourn loved ones lost. We pray especially for those close to our own life, the friends and family of Quint Noyes and David Clark, for all the ways in which their memories and remembrances will bring them comfort and assurance. We pray as well for all those among us and around us who continue to lead us through this crisis doctors and nurses, healthcare workers, public health officials, those leaders among us who continue, continue to be resolved in their fight to prevent the worst expressions of this virus. O oh, gracious one, you have scattered seeds among us. For that we are grateful for all the ways in which your seeds take root in us and around us, for all the ways you invite us to share the love that you have for all creation. We are grateful for this and so much more, even as we confess that too often the promise of growth eludes us amid distractions, confusions, worry. So in your grace, O oh God, forgive those moments when we fail to see the promise and beauty around us. In your mercy, forgive those moments when fears turn our gaze, our hearts, our lives inward. Grant us that courage, that trust, that resolve to live fully into this time so filled with uncertainty, but filling rapidly as well with new promise, new possibility, new opportunities. In ages past, O oh God, you have moved with your people, inviting vision of what lies over the horizon. Come now into this time. Guide us in our resolve to do what is best for ourselves and for all of us together, to live with a mutual sense of regard for the life around us. Grant us trust sufficient to follow where your spirit will lead us even into those places in which sacrifice is required. It's essential for the flourishing of all your life. In this season, O oh God, come and be our light. Give hope to our common prayer which we raise now to you in the name of the one through whom we all rise. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. i
As we go now into our week, may God hold all of our weeping, our pain, and our suffering, and may God meet us in the beauty and the wonder that we experience in the world around us. May God hold us in both those, joining them together so that life within us and among us may flourish. Go forth being held by the love and the spirit of God. Amen.